Well, we're glad to be back. We're really glad you're back with us. And what we want to talk about today, we hear from clients so many times how when they eat things that aren't whole food plant-based, they beat themselves up. They feel guilty and they do a number on themselves, making themselves wrong for what they've just chosen. And the question that we have today is what if falling off the trail is really important to learn what's needed next to be even more successful. I love that. Um, we all know that experience of, you know, I'm determined, I'm going to make this happen. We have New Year's resolutions. We're, we're really on track. And then something comes up and all of a sudden it's like we fall off the track. It's like, and so we're so angry because we're not meeting our own expectations. The, the, the rules, the conditions that we put on ourselves to live a better life. Now that intention is great, but you know what Connie's saying, we're going into game, game <laughs> going into guilt and shame um, is not what really helps us benefit on our evolution and going into a new change in diet and lifestyle. Yeah, and I want to make an admission like we've been at this for 35 years. Mm -hmm. more. <laughs> and it's been a gradual growing process. We've certainly, I certainly have learned from health conditions that have appeared mm -hmm. along the way to refine more, to refine more. Because the main underlying foundation for me has always been to have optimum health, to have the best health that I could have. And that doesn't mean I haven't spent time. Sometimes we'd have pizza when we were moving to a new house or whatever. I've had many instances where I've chosen away from what would be known as whole food plant-based in my journey. And every time I've learned, I've learned hmm, it might taste good, but I don't feel good. So what's the point? Yeah, I, I'd like to make a comment on that as well, because looking back on it, I'm glad you bring that up. <laughs> looking back on it, when we chose to have a pizza, or um, still to this day, we are not averse to eating meat. If we get from our system, our body, say, let's have some meat, we will eat meat. We are not... Um, I have to eat this way or else. You know, yeah. when I broke my shoulder, mm -hmm. um, it came really clear to me, go have some bison steak for the blood in it. That blood will help you heal. And that's what I did. I had it for two meals, done. And it seemed absolutely appropriate. Right. So a real key for us in the way that we eat and we encourage everyone to eat is to listen to your body. Because this body is always changing. It's changing as we age, it's changing through the seasons, it's changing if a woman gets pregnant, you know. The best way to know how to eat is by listening to your body. And of course we have a lot of habitual relationships with certain foods and we can get confused about is this the intelligence of my body or is this just an old habit wanting to feel good? So we work with people around that too. But for the purposes of this blog, we, we want to talk about um, listening to our bodies because that's how we know what to do. And when we go off the track, it's not about beating ourselves up. It's not that something's gone wrong. We can learn from that in the same way we learn, like if I'm trying to learn how to ride a bike and I fall over, if I just beat myself up, what have I learned from it? Uh, but that doesn't seem to be the way it works. Usually we're learning to ride a bike when we're six or seven years old and we're not quite into that self-criticism thing. So when we fall over, we go, oh, I just want to ride this bike. So we get back up and we utilize all the information 
that came in that process of falling over to help us stay up instead of, oh, I never want to fall over again. It's like, if I fall over, I will learn more. And that's how we access our way to finding our balance in riding a bike. It's not unlike that when we go off the track of food. There's so much to learn. Yeah, and the main thing that you want to learn is to tune in more and more to what satisfies and allows this body to thrive. And the body will always communicate with you if you listen. Mostly we don't. We override it. <laughs> with what we want. Yeah. <laughs> From here on. Exactly. Up. But if we just get quiet and ask and have a sincere openness to hear, you may not hear words, but you'll get something that indicates what is an ideal choice for mm -hmm. you. Now, there's one other point that really, really helps. When you eat whole food plant-based for a period of time, the body has, I don't know really what happens, but the body can signal you so clearly because it has that experience base with mm -hmm. you of eating really healthy versus processed craziness. So give yourself the opportunity to eat whole food plant-based for a week, two weeks, and see what happens. It's really magical. People have corrected their blood pressure in that period of time. They've mm. lost even their signs of diabetes. It's amazing what the body can do to heal itself if we give it what it needs. Yeah, you're bringing up this idea of listening to our bodies. Um, when I first was transitioning, and you so graciously were cooking for me, so I stayed on track. And we went to a macrobiotic workshop in Arkansas, and it was the first time that I had really eaten that cleanly for, I don't know, four or five meals in a row. And I remember we were going to the store to get something, or we were going out, we were in the car. I remember this so clearly. And I had this warm, wonderful feeling in my belt. And it dawned on me, it's like, is this what digestion can feel like? Is this how you can feel after eating? Because my whole life, up until then, I'd never experienced that. Because my whole life had been standard American diet, which had a lot of um, acidic, um, inflammatory type foods, uh, a lot of heavy cheeses and that kind of thing, which attacks the body. My body had never experienced the ease of digestion. Exactly. And that is possible when we just eat whole food plant-based, especially with SOS free. So I'm having this experience. And prior to that, I could never reference something like that as, oh, this is what I want to move toward. So as we um, transition in our eating whole food plant-based, the body just begins to make those changes like Connie says, and it gives us a new standard. It's like a new touchstone for what's possible. And so that's kind of part of what, you know, I was never on track. <laughs> so I learned a lot about what it's like to be off track. So when I got on track, I went, oh, this is so effortless. This is so amazing. This feels so good. And all of that experience, all those years of eating standard American diet and taxing my body, which was creating all this pain, was valuable in my being motivated to move toward the possibility I have to really experience uh, clarity, vitality, really thrive. Yeah, and when Bill says SOS free, in the last year, year or so, I've become salt, oil, and sugar free. And I had no idea that was a whole new level mm. of really supporting the body. And salt, oil, and sugar free, what happens? Well, initially, it's a bit of a challenge, but very short time. Why is it a challenge? Because food doesn't taste the same. That's all. It doesn't <laughs> taste the same because salt actually deadens the taste buds tremendously. So when you give it up, 
don't taste what you're used to tasting, but after a couple of weeks, the taste buds begin to adjust and you start tasting flavors in food that I never knew I had the capacity to experience. Now, if I would get something with salt in it, I immediately taste that deadened taste and it isn't what I prefer at all, at mm -hmm. all. And why SOS free? Well, that as we age really makes a difference with the brain blood vessels mm -hmm. and also throughout the body for strokes, for heart condition, for alertness. We want to really support the blood vessels to be flexible and open, not full of not surrounded or full of plaque. I'm not quite sure how to say that. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is start the journey. Let your body begin to inform you of what it really wants and needs. And then keep refining and going higher and higher with your choices around whole food, plant-based, salt, oil, and sugar-free. Yeah, and we can keep going higher and higher by learning from those experiences when we fall off the track. So it does no good to beat ourselves up and and and, and make firmer con firmer convictions to I'm not going to fall off the track again. All of that is just willpower and self discipline, and that never works long term. A sustainable change, a sustainable shift to a different lifestyle, whole food plant-based, SOS free, whatever you're drawn to, is available most easily if we're willing to live every moment for the moment as it is, and if we find ourselves falling off the track, learn from it. And you said as motivation is touched on the coming back on and uh, re-enlivening what we are really looking for, which is that clarity, that health, that vitality. Yeah, now tell them about the recipe. Oh, well, we did uh, red lentils tortillas. And it's really simple. Uh, it takes a little preparation. It's just a couple of red lentils and two cups of water. We soak that overnight in the blender. Then uh, I mean, we made it yesterday morning. And so uh, blend that up in the morning. It has a couple of spices in it, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, pepper ground pepper. Give it a little flavor. And uh, yeah, you just fry it up in a fry pan. It's that simple. And these are the best wraps, yeah. tortillas. Amazing. I think I've ever had. I've always loved burritos. And there was something about the white flour or even the whole food flour tortillas that added a chewiness to the whole experience of the burrito that I liked. But I always noticed that the, I don't know, nutritional value, there was something about those flour tortillas that I liked the texture, but it didn't seem to be adding much to the value, to the nutritional value of that dish. So we made these tortillas yesterday and we added the sauteed greens, kale, spinach, tomato, onion, peppers, peppers jalapeno. jalapeno. Sauteed that. So we put that in there with some salsa, rolled it up, and it was so fabulous because this wrap is nutritious. It's like having a bowl of lentils in your hand. I know, it's so good and it holds together mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. It's like having a sandwich. You you don't have to worry about it falling apart. So tell them what we did last night with it. Oh, we <laughs> saved one. They were about like this and made a pizza. We put on some tomato sauce that we added Italian seasoning to. And then we put on kale. No, kale. We didn't put on kale. We put on peppers, mushrooms, onion, jalapeno, mm -hmm. tomato. And then we put parsley after it had baked on top. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, we used to air fry it and heat it up for, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. And then, yeah, it, it was great. So it works well as a pizza crust, too. Yeah. Really, really tasty. It was delicious. Okay.
So be kind and loving to yourself and learn from every experience. That's the main thing. To steer you back to what is ideal for you in this life. Thanks for joining us.